Westcott moved into the mansion just two months before Perry and Bloom finalized their purchase. Westcott believes he was unduly influenced by post-surgery painkillers and his debilitating condition, Huntington's disease. Despite Westcott's stance, legal representatives for Perry and Bloom asserted their commitment to the purchase. One of the nuns dropped dead in the middle of a court appearance during this battle Katy Perry had over the purchase of the home the nuns lived in. Katy Perry said she was going to close it. It was going to be her home. This isn't the first time that Katy Perry has tried to steal property from old and sick people. Back in 2015, a nun passed away due to stress from her legal case with Katy. And now Katy is determined to take a property from an 80 year old man who wishes he could die peacefully in his own home. So let's get into it. It's time we talk about Katy Perry, because there have been a few instances where she is going to buy a piece of property, she gets into a legal dispute, and then the person who happens to own the property passes away, so then Katy Perry wins the battle. Like most recently, Katy is determined to buy this $15 million mansion, and she refuses to back down. The house is located in Montecito, California, and it's owned by this guy named Carl, who's actually the founder of 1-800-Flowers. Now what's interesting is that at some point I guess Carl did agree to sell the property to Katy Perry but he wasn't mentally aware of what he was doing. Carl isn't doing too well and I guess at one point he made a deal with Katy Perry yet he did not want to sell his home and he claims he was not sound of mind when he inked the deal. Katie will not walk away from the purchase and is expected to take the stand and fight this man over his home, which he claims that he didn't really want to sell in the first place. I guess back in May 2020, Carl purchased the property for $11 million and was looking to sell the property two months later for a quick profit, so he signed a deal with Katy Perry for $15 million in July. We then learned that Carl, who's in his 80s, had been taking painkillers after a major surgery and was in no condition to negotiate this kind of contract and he just wanted to stay in that home and die in that home imagine living out your golden years in a dream beachfront home only for mega celebrities to come knocking wanting your signature on a deed ailing 83 year old army vet carl westcott claims he unknowingly signed away his 15 million dollar santa barbara mansion to pop icons katy perry and orlando bloom the twist Westcott believes he was unduly influenced by post-surgery painkillers and his debilitating condition, Huntington's disease. The sale is being contested in court. The Perry Bloom side is sticking to their claim, asserting the deal's validity. Meanwhile, Westcott's once joy-filled new home now symbolizes a battle over his autonomy in his last years. It's kind of sad that Katie can't go find another home for $15 million. She's determined to rip this home from under this 80 year old man's feet. So actually Carl decided to sue the business manager of Katie Perry's for putting him in this deal when he was not aware of what was going on. Yet Katie responded saying that she wants to go through with the deal. So they're going to have a judge decide on this in the Stanley Moss courthouse, which is full of corruption. Katie claims that Carl knew perfectly well what he was doing, and he stood to make millions on the sale. They said that he was competent when he hired an experienced real estate broker, vetted the brokerage commission rate, and arranged showings of the property. So they're saying that he knew what he was doing, and they were just buying a home, and they bought this home, and they are entitled to it. Yet Carl's family is standing by him and his decision. He's got a son named Sean. Chart Westcott. I never heard of the name Chart. Chart? Chart? I'm guessing I want to say Chart. But um, he said that his father's health was declining. In mid-2021, he was admitted into a full-time medical facility and was showing signs of dementia. Chart said that it's not a fight that I picked, but one I sadly inherited. Chart has power of attorney over his father and has taken over the case, so he's the one battling it out with Katy Perry. Chart claims that he's appalled at how the Katy Perry camp has handled the affair. At this point, he said he'd be hard-pressed to accept any price that... Katy Perry might be willing to pay. He said, now does everything in the world have a price? Yeah, but is ours ridiculously high because of how upset we are with how we've been treated? 
Yes. So he said, I guess if he's going to sell the property to Katie, he's going to overcharge her a ton. Situated at 1569 East Valley Road, the luxurious estate spans 8.9 acres. However, the saga took an unexpected turn when 83-year-old Carl Westcott, a former U.S. Army member and purchaser of the property, contested the sale. Westcott moved into the mansion just two months before Perry and Bloom finalized their purchase. According to court documents obtained by the Post, Westcott alleges that he lacked the mental capacity to comprehend the implications of the contract when he agreed to sell his home on July 14, 2020. His claims stem from his age, deteriorating health due to Huntington's disease, and recent major surgery that left him mentally impaired. Well, Katy Perry isn't going down without a fight, and she claims that she was going to buy the home and rent it out. And since she hasn't been able to rent it out, she wants an extra $2.6 million in lost rental income from Carl, who's on his deathbed. Katy and Orlando wanted this home to be their family retreat and the best place to raise their daughter. But after being blocked from moving in it for three years, the couple have changed their tune, and now they're claiming they've missed out on $2.6 million. So not only are they fighting to finally get their hands on the dementia sufferers home but they also want millions of dollars in compensation carl's lawyers are calling bs because they claim that she never mentioned wanting to rent out this property so how did she come up with this strategy she's trying to just like fight them so hard in court that they eventually give up. A member of Carl's family told the Daily Mail, the bullying behavior of Katy Perry reminds us that even the brightest of stars can cast shadows. In the spotlight, she sings of love and compassion, but you don't need to look too hard to see that Katy Perry has a pattern of behavior in which she seemingly targets the weak and vulnerable for her own gain. And it does seem like Katy Perry tried to move peacefully in the beginning, writing a letter to Carl begging him to allow them to move in, but it never went down well. So when Bernie the rep who is named as a defendant in this lawsuit gets this news, he goes to his buyers, Katie and Orlando, and asks them to write a letter to Carl Westcott, essentially pleading for this house. You can pause to read, but essentially Katie and Orlando are saying, you know, we're about to have our first baby. You know, this house would bring us so much joy and comfort and security. They even bring up their dog that just passed away. So Carl's like, look, I read the letter, but I'm sorry, I still don't wanna sell. Bernie's like, well, too bad you signed the contract. And that's how we end up here. Three years later, about to go to trial this week to see who is gonna be the actual owner of this house. So again, even though Katy Perry isn't listed as a defendant in the lawsuit, she is included in the witness list and is expected to take the stand this week. Now, I respect a deal. A deal is a deal. But if Carl wasn't in the right place, then I can totally see how he could have been manipulated. And he just had surgery like six days before he signed this deal, signed his house away. So I don't think he was like fully aware of what he was getting into. And maybe they do, they do need to take a deeper look at it. But at the same time, it doesn't seem like Katy Perry is going to be budging. So if the contract was signed and they can prove that he was capable of signing it, then she probably will win. But it's also just such a bad look for Katy Perry. And also, why do you even want to live in this house if this person truly doesn't want to give it to you? In an intriguing twist, just a week after the contract was signed, Westcott regained mental clarity once the effects of his post-surgery medication wore off. Realizing his misjudgment, he communicated his desire to retain the property to the real estate agency involved. Perry and Bloom, however, expressed their admiration for the mansion and offered to pay more than what Westcott had initially paid. In response, Westcott explained his reluctance to sell as he entered the final phase of his life. Despite Westcott's stance, legal representatives for Perry and Bloom asserted their commitment to the purchase. A trial to address the matter is scheduled for later this month. So this has put a lot of stress on the Westcott family. Actually, one of the family members is Cameron Westcott, who's a real housewife of... What is OD? Oh, orange. Where is OD? I don't even know. Real Housewife of Dallas. I actually haven't watched that series before, but she claims that this case is affecting her marriage. Cameron claims that her marriage has been affected by her father-in-law's mansion war with Katy Perry, saying that the legal battle has put her marriage and family under so much stress. Cameron got candid about the toll that Carl's legal feud has taken on their family, especially her husband, Court, who she said doesn't want to be in the public eye. Carl's son, Court, has been working his job and working with the lawyers, and I guess his wife is on the real 
Real Housewives of Dallas. So if he really doesn't want to be public, he's probably got a lot of pressure on him. Cameron is saying that they're worried that Carl's not going to be living much longer, which means Katy Perry is going to have a big win in this case. Actually, she claims before they went back to Dallas that they gave a goodbye to him. So it's really like giving his last moments. Cameron said they fear that he might not make it through the trial, but they will 100% still fight for Carl's justice and honor. Cameron claims that she plans to be in the courtroom when the pop star takes the stand, but she will be traveling back and forth between Dallas and LA to support their children while her husband focuses on the case. Now, Carl's lawyers have brought up the fact that this is a pattern for Katy Perry, targeting vulnerable people for their properties, and this hasn't been the first time. Reading this story made me think about the nun situation, where Katy Perry took these nuns to court and then the nun just happened to die. The nuns were begging Katy Perry to stop and to leave them alone, but she took them to court and made sure that she could secure this property from them. Katy Perry tried to purchase a $14.5 million LA estate in 2014 in cold, hard cash. The only problem? It housed a group of nuns from the Sisters of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. The nuns fought a long legal battle to maintain control of the convent. And as if it couldn't get any worse, a nun ended up passing away in court. Katy Perry has since abandoned the purchase. Personal advice? Don't let Katy Perry ask you. This was actually a really bad story for Katy Perry's reputation. I mean, who wants to be known for running a bunch of nuns out of their convent? And she actually told her lawyer that she would take no for an answer, so she sued everyone involved. They actually lived in this covent since the 70s, and they put out a statement saying, our sisters were supposed to live the rest of our lives in our beloved covent. But against our will, they have removed us to monetize our property. Katy Perry wants it, and she has no concern for the terrible power of destruction she's creating to get it. One of the sisters suddenly collapsed and died during a court hearing today. KKL 9's Tom Wade is live at the convent in Los Feliz with the latest. Tom. I can tell you this has been a very ugly battle for the ownership of this convent. It's been Katy Perry aligned with the archdiocese versus these nuns. One of them died in court today. Katy Perry said she was going to close it. It was going to be her home. That sister, Catherine Rose, explaining why she wanted to block the sale of her former convent to pop star Katy Perry. Rose collapsed and died in court today during a hearing involving the ongoing battle to prevent Perry from taking over the property. Late this evening, Archbishop Jose Gomez released a statement that reads in part, Sister Catherine Rose Holtzman, IHM, Immaculate Heart of Mary, passed away suddenly at the age of 89. Sister Catherine Rose served the church with dedication and love for many years, and today we remember her life with gratitude. The nuns tried to keep this covenant away from Katy Perry. They even sold it to a friend for $44,000. But then Katy Perry sued that friend for $15 million, claiming that they disrupted the sale. Nonetheless, the stress of this legal battle pushed one of the nuns into heaven, and they had passed away. Yes, in 2018, one of the nuns dropped dead in the middle of a court appearance during this battle Katy Perry had over the purchase of the home the nuns lived in. So this estate that Katy Perry purchased in 2015 had been bought by the nuns back in 1972 when they pulled all their money together. Then in 2011, the archdiocese were forcing the nuns to relocate, they believe, because they were trying to find buyers. The nuns, of course, still believe that they had every right to sell the property. The archbishop agreed to sell the property to Katy Perry, but the nuns did not want to sell it to Katy. They instead wanted to sell it to a restaurateur, Dana Hollister. The nuns did not want this property to end up in Katy Perry's hands, so they sold it to Hollister. Hollister moved into the property, but then the archdiocese and Katy Perry end up suing Hollister. Katy Perry ends up the rightful owner of this house and wins her case against Hollister for millions of dollars and Hollister declares bankruptcy. Then when going to bankruptcy court, the nuns went to court to support Hollister and that is when one of the nuns dropped dead in the courtroom. It's a bizarre story to end with, especially because Katy Perry was from a Christian background. Her first album, I believe, was Christian music. So to go against the nuns is very telling. But I want to hear what you guys think in the comments below, and I'll see you in a new one soon. Bye, guys.